My friends, I'm constantly meeting people along the way of life that say to me, I cannot understand the Bible. Uh, there's so many things I can't understand. Well, I usually ask them to tell me something they can understand. And they usually find something that's very simple if they say that's clear. Well, I say live up to that. One time a man went to a preacher and said, You know, I don't understand the Bible. Well, he said, Let's see how much you can understand. We'll start with the Ten Commandments. Now, take this one. Thou shalt not steal. He said, You know what stealing is, don't you? Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, I understand that. Well, what does this Bible say about stealing? Well, it says, Thou shalt not steal. Well, it says that uh, man shouldn't steal. That's clear, isn't it? He said, yes. Well, he said, why don't you quit stealing? Oh, he said, I understand that. You know, uh, it isn't that you don't understand. As a matter of fact, the fundamental statements of the Bible are perfectly clear. Now, just take a few of them. There's no book like it. Never has been any book like the Bible. It's simple and clear and full of meaning if you have a spiritual and understanding mind. Of course, the Bible itself says that God of this world has blinded the eyes of men and they can't see. But it's not hard. There may be things in the Bible that are too deep for you and too high for you, things that you never can quite grasp. But all the essential things are stated very simply. Now, for instance, take this statement. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's clear, isn't it? What does that mean? Jesus said, you want to go to heaven, don't you? Yes. Well, I'm the way. You're the way. Yes, I'm the way. You mean I've got to go to heaven by you? Yes, I'm the way. That's simple. Now, take another passage. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not uh, perish, but have everlasting life. What does that mean? God gave Jesus, and Jesus died on the cross. What for? So if a man would believe in him, he would not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, that's not hard to understand. You understand that. You, you believe in Jesus. That's, uh, that, that's what you have to do to keep from being lost. Take another passage. It's so clear, it's so simple. By grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. By grace, through faith. What is grace? Don't you know what grace is? Grace is something you don't earn. Now, that means that you can't earn salvation. You can't pay for it after you get it. It's something that you can't earn, that's given to you by God. Now, by grace are you saved. That means you're saved by the mercy and kindness and goodness and graciousness of God. Now, how are you saved? Through faith. Through faith. Now, that faith, what is faith? It's believing something. Faith in the Bible means just exactly what does what faith means in the dictionary. Uh, what does it mean in the dictionary? It means to believe something. That's all faith is. You believe something so finally you commit yourself to it when necessary. Now, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That ought not to be hard. What does it mean to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, uh, here's a man. He, he's in jail. He's in trouble. He's behind bars. And uh, he can't get out. He doesn't know what to do. But he says some, to somebody, I'd like to have a good lawyer. Who's a good lawyer? And they say, well, so-and-so down here is a good lawyer. Well, may I see you? Will you get him for me? And the lawyer comes there, and, and the lawyer says, uh, what do you want? He says, I want you to take my case. I'm in jail. I don't know how to get out. I, I need somebody who can get me out of this trouble. Now, I put my case in your hands, and uh, you're the lawyer. Now, I'm willing to make a deal with you. Uh, I'll do what you say to Well, he said, now, you don't say anything. You just leave it to me. Now, what did he do? He believed in the lawyer so much he put his case in the lawyer's hand. All right, here's a fellow that's sick. He's a sick man. He, uh, uh, he's in bad fix. And he says, you know, I've tried everything I know to try. I've taken medicine. I've done the best I could. And I don't know what to do myself. He sends for a doctor. And the doctor comes and he says, now, doctor, I'm sick. 
I want to. I want you to take my case. I just put myself in your hands. That's what it means to believe. That's what it means to believe in Jesus Christ. Now listen, men and women, boys and girls, listen to me. You know the greatest truths in the world are simple truths. As a matter of fact, simplicity is, the most, is truth most becoming garb. Simplicity. Oh, I've heard these preachers that stand up and, and, and nobody knew what they were talking about. Why don't you come down to earth and talk so folks know what you're saying? I never even understood these people. Now Jesus was on the mountaintop. The Bible said the common people heard him gladly. He didn't cover an idea with a great deal of many words. He talked so your average, ordinary man to understand him. The common people heard him gladly. They said, we never heard anybody talk like that. All this vague theological stuff. that The rest of them were telling, we never heard anything like what he says. And they'd gather around him and little babies would try to get to him. And plain women would hold up the little babies and little babies would stretch out their arms to get to him. Take the sermon on the mount. The most profound statement, philosophical statement ever uttered is one verse in the Sermon on the Mount. Now notice it. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Every word in that statement is a monosyllable except one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. There's never been a philosopher in the world ever uh, uttered a statement as profound as that. And yet he sat there on the mountaintop with his disciples around him, giving the most profound truths the world ever heard in monosyllables. You know, I don't know what's the matter with us preachers. I don't know what's the matter with us Christian people. Why don't we come down to earth where people live? You know, I heard a preacher not long ago. Uh, he talked and talked and talked and talked. And he was a great theologian, so profound. And all he said, he could have said in three minutes, and everybody would have understood it. Now, I don't mean that you have to have short sermons because exhortation is supposed to go along with preaching. I don't take any stock in cutting his sermons down too short. And I have no patience with the tendency in this day and time to put the gospel train on a side track and let every horn tooting train pass. I believe in preaching, old time preaching. Because when Paul wrote Timothy, he told Timothy to reprove. It takes time for that. Rebuke. It takes time for that. And told him to do it with all long suffering and teaching. There are other things besides preaching except to just proclaim the gospel. There's exhortation, reproof, correction. All that sort of thing goes with it. And I don't mean that a sermon necessarily has to be just about a 15-minute sermon. I don't mean that. If a man's on fire with the Holy Spirit, He'll stand up there if his heart's burning, and he won't have any trouble holding a crowd for a reasonable length of time. But when it comes from, to a point of stating things, so people can get a hold of it, why not come to the point? Why go around about road when there's a straight line there? Uh, you know, a man one time, a young fellow in the university, went to a professor. He said, Professor, I believe I could write a book of Proverbs. It's wonderful as a Proverbs in the Bible. He said, all right, I'll tell you what you do. You just go write one. Try it. Come back and see me in a day or two. And a day or two he came back and said, I can't write like that. You know, you can't write like that. God's truth is so simply clothed. Now we read that there are things we can't understand. I have not seen, nor heard. Neither have into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But many women, if you are lost, if you are never saved, if you don't go to heaven when you die, it will not be because the road isn't well marked. And there are 10,000 voices in the world today clamoring to be heard. Somebody says, do this, do that, do the other, do the other. And I look up and say, Jesus, they're all talking a great deal. Uh, won't you tell me, please, Jesus? I'd I like to know the way home. And Jesus said, Well, I'm glad to tell you. I am the way. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. 
If you have Christ, you have life. If you have Christ, you're a Christian. If you haven't Christ, you have life. If you haven't Christ, you're not a Christian. As many have received him to them, gave you the right to become children of God, even then to believe on his name. Why don't you trust him? Why do you go on and talk so much about the thing and say you can't understand? Just start right here. Tell Jesus, so much I don't know, but, but I believe you love me and I believe you died for me and I believe you're able to save me and I'll trust you. And if you'll do that, someday we'll be seeing each other. When the mists have rolled away over on the other side, we'll be at home together. God help us to be faithful. Our Father, we yield ourselves to thee anew. We dedicate our lives anew to this simple statement of the gospel truth. Jesus died for us. He rose from the dead. He is sent into heaven. We are saved by faith in his atoning blood, which he shed on Calvary's cross. Keep us faithful and true, we pray in his name. Amen.